Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. A very warm welcome to all of you. I am Shubhendu Park, editor of Voice and Data and Data Quest, and your host for today's webinar on building a cloud native converged mobile core. The webinar is part of the magazine's capacity building and information sharing initiative, where we bring to you experts from the industry to talk about technology trends, latest developments, technology challenges, and also uh, the how to training programs that we have and uh, strategy sessions. In today's session, we have with us two very distinguished guests uh, with a lot of experience in the core and radio access network space. You know, while technology has always disrupted the market, business models and the way things are done. The recent pandemic, you know, over since 2020 as and the lockdown and the, you know, post lockdown and during the lockdown, the work from home and digitalization. So it, it has actually brought an unprecedented level of change uh, across the sectors. Uh, this includes, you know, the way enterprises and businesses are run and how their services are delivered. During all of this, the biggest winner, as we know, is the cloud. However, the moment you mention cloud, there's always several questions. Uh, there are different variants to be dealt with, security, ownership. And uh, with the telecom sector emerging as the backbone of the new digital normal, it's the space has become more interesting. And, and uh, you know, the, the nitty gritties of the cloud native architecture for this sector and, and the overall uh, converged mobile code as we are, what we are talking about. And uh, with the government announcing the 5G trial in India, this space is further going to be more interesting. So uh, without uh, much ado, ladies and gentlemen, I'm honored to welcome and introduce our first speaker uh, and the main uh, guest. Mr. Dejan uh, uh, Leskarovsky. He is the head of product management, Mavinir. Uh, Mr. Leskarovsky uh, leads product related activities as part of the company's packet compute business unit, including the virtualized evolved packet core, EPC, and the fully containerized 5G core, 5GC. He has over 20 years of industry experience in delivering telecom products and solutions for several uh, leading tier one operators in both the core and radio access network space, including 4G, 5G network functions, NFD, cloud integration and orchestration. He's a man with equal knack for technology and languages. He speaks English, Russian, Macedonian and Serbian. He has also published works, including one on frequency planning and adjacent channel interface within ESSF, wireless local network. From starting his career as a test engineer to co-founding Simple uh, Smart Apple Solution, and now in his current role in Mavnet, he has covered a long journey. Welcome to you, Mr. Dayan Leskorski. I also welcome Mr. Sudhan Chu Dora, the Chief Technology Officer at Mavini for India and South Asia. In his current position, he looks after strategy, business development, and solutions for cloud-based voice code, packet code, and open RAN technologies across South Asia region. He has over two decades of experience in telecom industry, <clears throat> and has uh, over the years worked with companies such as Reliance, Vodafone, Logica, CNG, Nokia, and Pura in various capacities. And so, uh, welcome to you, Mr. Dora. Uh, it's wonderful to have both of you in today's session. Um, but before we begin the session, there's some housekeeping essentials that I would like to announce. For the duration of the webinar, all participants will be on listen-only mode. However, participants will be able to uh, send questions to the chat window, and we will take it uh, depending on the available time. Uh, uh, your feedback is also very important for us, and hence uh, may I request you to submit your feedback after the end of the session. <laughs> to make the session interactive, we also have few poll questions, and you'll be uh, able to answer to those uh, questions on the screen. Uh, the questions will be displayed, and you'll be able to respond. 
and the results will be visible immediately. Now, to begin the session, may I request uh, Mr. Dian Neskarovsky to present his perspective. This presentation will be followed by Q&A. So please hold your horses till then. Over to you, sir. Thank you uh, very much. And uh, thank you for the very kind introduction. Uh, welcome everyone uh, to this webinar. Um, I hope you will find it uh, very informative and as well as interactive. Um, what we'll cover today in the next hour is how to build a, a cloud native converged mobile core. Um, uh, cloud native, it's a, it's a word that uh, obviously has been used and, and at times maybe uh, overused in, in the telecom industry. Um, the definition is very straightforward, but to many people can have a different meaning. And uh, what we want to try to do, to do today is kind of kind of give you some insight on uh, what does it really mean to build a cloud native uh, solution uh, in this particular case that the mobile packet core um, and why does that matter to operators? Um, you know why why cloud native? Um, what are the advantages and the benefits of, of cloud native? So without further ado, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna just kind of highlight the agenda. Um, my colleague Sudanshu, um, he will cover uh, from an India regional perspective. Um, uh, and, and then cover. Um, some of the opportunities and benefits of of, uh, of 5G and, and moving to a cloud native architecture. We'll talk about some specific use cases. Um, it's not just about the consumer anymore. Uh, 5G actually opens the door of many other use cases that, that operators can take advantage of. Uh, and then we'll talk about the Mavenia converged packet core uh, and, and, and how we're actually building a cloud native core that, that can be agile and meet different use cases. Uh, so, so Dan, I'll turn it over to you. Uh, to cover the the uh, the India mobile economy view, I'll just jump directly in the, in the first slide uh, for you. So go ahead. Thank you, Dehan. Good morning, everybody, and very early good morning to you, Dehan. <laughs> so 5G can unleash new economic opportunities and societal benefits, giving it the potential for being a transformational force for Indian society. It can help our country lift up the traditional barriers to development as well as advance the digital India vision of our Prime Minister. The cumulative economic impact of 5G on India can reach 1 trillion US dollar by 2035. Looking at the 5G, the three priorities for India, as we see are deployment, technology, and manufacturing. 5G vision for India has been, it has the potential for us seeing a major societal transformation in India by enabling a rapid expansion of the role of information technology across the fields like educational, healthcare, manufacturing, financial and societal sectors. India's mobile subscription penetration is expected to cross 100% in 2023, driven by the growing smartphone penetration. The forecast says that 5G will represent around 27% of mobile subscriptions in India and at the end of 2026 estimated to be nearly 350 million subscriptions. If you go to the next slide, Deha. Yeah. With smartphone adaptations uh, showed in the past two to three years, and India is forecast to be second largest smartphone market in the world by 2025, that is predicted. The Indian market and operators still face key challenges that hinder the operator's capacity to adapt and invest in 4G, EPC and 5G technology. High cost of physical devices and the cost of operating and maintaining the current network amid the increased demand. There's a very high capex and opex because of that. Bandwidth intensive content is overloading the networks. So there is a risk of outage and the speed of recovery is very essential. This is the challenge that operators are facing today. The operators also face the challenge of expectation of agile service deployment for capacity demand and to give a customer experience that a better experience with reduced download speeds or reduced video quality and low download speeds are impacting the customer customer experiences. 
Next slide. Mm -hmm. So what do the operator need? And what do the operator need to overcome the challenges? They need a customizable network so that they can do a network slicing for the customer needs. They could give a traffic, they could provide a traffic isolation. They could provide at the same time security to these slices. This is one of the operator needs. The network should have better performance in terms of latency, higher throughput. The network should be decoupled architecture to be able to give edge application kind of environment that will give again low latency and very high support. The network has to be web scale based cloud native infrastructure so that will give a faster deployment capability to an operator. Service velocity is equally important to give rapid speed uh, and stay agile whenever the capacity demands. And all these things should be possible with automation and CI CD, which will involve very lesser uh, human involvement and without very less downtime to the uh, to the network. Deha? Yes. Next slide. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Sudanshu. Um, so from from this point on and, and i'm kind of going to start building on what what sudanchu uh, was saying um sudanchu so far covered kind of the operator needs in terms of agile deployment um reduced capex and opex and as we go kind of from from one generation of 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 telco to another um each generation provides its own benefit so there was a journey from 2g to 3g 3g to 4g brought some virtualization and kind of getting away from uh, proprietary hardware, maybe running it in virtual machines. With 5G, um, it's not just about higher speed and new technology. It's really a mind shift of taking telco loads and bringing it into a, a cloud-based architecture. So a couple of things we, I wanna touch on um, when we compare, for example, a 4G uh, architecture and 4G technology versus 5G architecture and 5G technology. There is a shift from uh, node-based or um, you know 3GPP type of uh, interfaces into service-based interfaces. So um, in in existing networks, you know your your typical 4G networks, um, the interfaces are are diameter interfaces, GTP type of interfaces. Um, the interoperability uh, between different network functions, especially if those network functions are from different vendors, um, it takes time. Uh, there's typ typically interoperability issues. Um, it's very hard to introduce new vendors in, in the market. Um, by moving to 5G, uh, everything is moving to service-based uh, architecture, service-based interfaces. The protocols that the service-based interfaces are using, it's HTTP2-based. So now actually being able to interrupt and bring new vendors into the marketplace becomes much, much easier. And we have already seen this uh, by, by doing uh, uh, trials and POCs with, with multiple tier ones uh, already. Uh, one other thing is the separation of user plane and control plane. It is true that some of this was available in 4G with CUPS. Uh, however, Now you can actually have the user plane deployed at the edge, um, or you can have it decoupled from all the different control plane applications. So now you can actually be able to address uh, edge type of applications, um, uh, Mac type of applications uh, for, 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 your, for your use case. They can do two things. One, address the need for new use cases. Two, um, reduce your CapEx and OpEx, but being able to actually offload and address high data demands uh, at the edge instead of having to, to take all of the data into the centralized location. Um, another thing is from a, a scalability standpoint, um, although virtualization and moving to VMs did address some of this, uh, virtual machines are still large in nature. Um, by moving to cloud native, by moving to true microservices, so being able to run applications in containers, you can really, really scale down on how much resources you need to deploy even a full packet core. Where this becomes important is going after 
uh, industrial use cases, enterprise use cases, private network use cases. So, um, you know, taking a one server, two server type of a solution and actually deploying the full 5G packet core onto a one or two server footprint. This is only possible by actually being able to to really scale down um, the, um, the, the, the the packet core solution using containers. So all of these things kind of play a role and we'll, as we go through this presentation, you'll see how the new architecture actually helps you address some of these use cases. So from a use case perspective, um, and some of you, if not many of you have, have, have seen some of um, the, 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 the new use cases that, that 5G offers, um, it is not just about the consumer anymore. So yes, the consumer will be able to get um, high capacity, higher throughput with enhanced mobile broadband. But in addition to that, um, it is focusing on um, massive um, IoT communication. Um, so um, IoT devices, this could be of course, you know, devices like meters um, or sensors, all the way to uh, video streaming, uh, security cameras, uh, AR, VR type of applications. Um, uh, and then um, the URLC, the ultra reliable low latency communication type of use cases, um, either connected cars where uh, different cars are actually communicating to each other to uh, being able to do um, uh, AR and VR type of applications uh, or interactive gaming. Um, all of these kind of things are um, enabled by the 5G uh, standalone solution. And a lot of this functionality has already been defined within the 3GPP16 standards with 3GPP17 actually improving on a lot of these use cases. Um, so from a use case perspective, the, the other thing that, that is important to mention, on one side you have the use cases, um, but because they're different, uh, different users, um, network slicing becomes a big, big player in, in the 5G core. Uh, the reason why that is important is that in today's traditional network, uh, it's basically one network um, trying to address multiple use cases. So um, the same network uh, is trying to address your typical uh, consumer user, your, 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 your mobile device um, uh, users. Um, and then the same network may be used also for IoT devices who may not need the same SLA or same type of throughput as your, as your handheld devices. Um, and, and that creates a challenge. Either the network is over provisioned, or in some cases, operators are forced to actually deploy multiple networks. So they may need to deploy a standalone packet core for uh, consumer, a standalone packet core um, for, for IoT devices, um, or even, even for voice. By adapting a 5G core solution network slicing, now you can actually leverage the same packet core but provide dedicated resources. So you can actually provide either a full end-to-end -end network slice, including the RAN, or just particular parts of the, of, the, of the packet core dedicated for a slice where the rest of the network is being shared. So think of it, for example, subscriber management, policy management, uh, charging may be common, but in order to guarantee you particular SLAs for let's say a URLC use case, you will have a dedicated user plane, uh, maybe even a dedicated some, some of the control plane functions uh, for that particular slice. So that's just a little bit to kind of touch on what are the benefits and what, it's, uh, what, what 5G uh, enables. What I'll do here before I move on, uh, we do have two poll questions. Um, so the first poll question um, I'm gonna ask you to, to uh, if, you can, if you can show, we would love to get your input. Um, we would like to make this a little bit interactive. So it'd be great to get the poll question and I'll, I'll stop here for a second so we can answer the question. So just to read out the question, according to you, which sector will benefit the most from 5G in India? The options are healthcare and pharma, industrial and automotive, finance and IT. You may answer your, uh, give your options now.
Dayan and uh, Sugandhu. Yes. Here is the results. We can we can proceed. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, you can and and everyone can see. Okay. Just want to make sure we can see. Okay. So uh, in the in the first section we kind of touched on the on the different use cases. So in the next section we'll again we will talk a little bit about your traditional use cases uh, from a, a consumer standpoint. Um, but we'll touch on some of these other use cases that are enabled with, with 5G. Yes, there is some parts of this that are being addressed with, with 4G, um, but with, with 5G, it's really being able to scale um, the, 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 the network or, or the packet core to actually ad address these use cases. So if you see on the left side, the left hand side, um, we have listed kind of the typical network functions you will have in a 4G and a 5G um, network or, um, in order to address your typical consumer MNO and MVNO um, use cases. So on the 4G side, you have your MME, uh, your P gateway, S gateway, PCRF, um, and CGNet. I know there's, there's other components there. We, we just simplify this uh, a little bit um, just to kind of, kind of, kind of illustrate the, the differences. And then the equivalent on the 5G core side, it will be the AMF, SMF, UPF. Um, and then uh, from a 5G core perspective, um, there are few additional components that are being introduced and they have been defined by 3GPP uh, and NRF for uh, Slicing based application in the EMV network as a subscriber method. So, the components IoT uh, about the changes in IoT is that in addition to actually having an optimized um, control plane and user plane that can scale for a large number of devices, uh, one of the things that 5G uh, did is they defined an NEF. So, uh, NEF is the evolution of the SCAP function that was in 4G. Um, the big difference here is that um, in, in 4G, SCAP kind of came a little bit late um, in, in the um, overall definition. From a 5G perspective, the NEF is going to play a big role from day one. Um, I do have some sus subsequent slides that, that will talk about um, kind of what type of use cases NEF can provide in terms of location services um, and other options that, um, that are capable for these kind of IoT devices. Um, the other two use cases, um, again, there are some presidents in 4G. 5G really, really accelerates and enables you to actually take advantage of this. Um, the UPF, as I was saying before, it's natively decoupled. So now I can take the UPF, I can bring it very close to the edge. Um, in the past, in a 4G world, um, you may have a dependency between the, for example, the SA Gateway U and the SA Gateway C. So in other words, um, you know, you, you may not have to uh, be able to decouple those two, two functions. In the 5G world, I can take the user plane function, I can bring it very close to the edge, I can co-locate it with my Mac application, my Mac platform, I can co-locate it with the REN access network, and I can really start enabling um, this type of stadium use cases, uh, hospital use cases, um, gaming use cases where um, the user plane can offload all the throughput and actually leverage a centralized control plane uh, packet core. And lastly, um, NPN. We have seen a, a big, big traction over the last year, year plus, when it comes to 5G non-public networks. Um, so with industry 4.0 definitions, um, what, what, with the right packet core um, and being able to run in containers, I can really shrink of how much resources I need for a private network. Many of the private private networks do not need um, a lot of um, to support a lot of subscribers. So I can have a solution that is literally a single server, a two server solution, and I can deploy it in a warehouse. I can employ and deploy it in an automotive um, uh, factory, and I can deploy a full blown private network um, owned by by the enterprise or by 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 the by the industry provider and address my 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 5g needs so again it, it it really kind of opens the door for operators to really expand beyond just uh, going after the consumer market 
So a couple of things here, just for illustration purposes, I, I you know, just to kind of touch on these things. Um, again, this is this is where kind of we've seen a lot of traction in terms of use cases. Yes, 5G enables consumer, but industrial IoT, healthcare, um, vehicle communication have really, really enabled us to to provide this kind of uh, uh, NPN type of solution to our our, our customers. Uh, the other thing has to do with being able to use Mac applications such as um, uh, you know face recognition software, uh, video analysis software, where the Mac application is co-located with the user plane with the UPF, and it provides a um, at the edge services for various video like or gaming like uh, type of services. Um, so I. When I talked about the NEF, now this is not just specific to NEF, but actually opens the door on a 5G core perspective in terms of um, location services. Uh, location services can be utilized today. Um, 3GPP has really defined additional enhancements when it comes to uh, the AMF uh, uh, and the SMF and PCF of how they actually um, uh, report this data. The accuracy is much, much uh, more granular. When it, when it comes to um, being able to identify a particular IoT device or a particular user of where they're actually located. Um, and you can offer a variety of, of, of services depending on where the actual device um, uh, it's moving or it's opting in an area. Uh, if you see there on the right, uh, this is an example where um, using the NEF uh, and, 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 the, and the 5G core, you can actually define opt-in area so you can say, look, once a particular subscriber or particular device uh, enters this area, I will enable uh, different types of services. Uh, it could be an advertising service. It could be an enhanced um, a video or enhanced interactive service. It could be a, sh a shopping example that, that it's enabled once they actually enter a particular area. So again, just to kind of give you uh, an example, this is by no means a full uh, span of all the use cases, but just kind of to give you an example of some of the possible use cases that uh, uh, cloud native 5G core offers. Okay, so I before we go into the converged core that uh, Mavenir is building and, and, and offering, I wanted to stop here for the second poll question that we have for the webinar. So the question is, what is your company's primary strategy when selecting a 5G core vendor? Options are you select a new vendor for 4G and 5G, you introduce new vendors for 5G and keep the talent for 4G, you use existing vendors for 4G and 5G, or you use a mix of new and current vendors for common 4G, 5G core. You may answer your questions now. So here are the answers, and uh, Dian, do you have any comments on this? On the, you know, the response? I, I actually cannot see the answers. I, I was wondering if I need to switch. Uh, let me see here. Okay, so uh, nine percent feel that select they should select new vendors for four G. Fifteen percent feel that they should introduce new vendors for five G and keep the current for four G. Thirteen percent feel using existing vendors for four G and five G is good enough. And over 62% feel that a mix of new and current vendors for common 4G, 5G core would be the better option. So yes. the majority feel that there should be a mix of new and current vendors Absolutely. for a common 4G, 5G core. Yes. And that um, actually what I'll do is um, I'll jump into, into this slide here. Uh, one second here. Um, uh, let me just comment on that. Um, that's kind of the trend we are seeing um, across um, different regions as well. Um, so the way uh, we, we have seen this is um, 
again, you know, there are multiple reasons for being able to actually allow for different vendors to come in. For one, um, 3GPP has done a very good job in standardizing everything on the service-based interfaces. So now the interrupt between different vendors becomes much easier. Um, in terms of orchestration and automation and configurations, um, the vendors are being pushed to standardize. So, um, you know, how do you actually configure um, networks? Again, moving to, to containers, moving to Kubernetes. Um, the, there's much better commonality across vendors. So now it becomes easier for operator to say, yes, you know, I will take two or three different vendors to build my next gen um, uh, packet core. And we've seen this, you know, there's a lot of tier one vendors that, for example, they have said, okay, for subscriber and, and uh, management, I will go with vendor X. Uh, for policy and charging, I may go with uh, vendor Y. And then with, even within the packet core, different components have been broken down and different vendors kind of have been, have been playing a role. So it's definitely something that um, can open the door for, for other vendors. Uh, the other thing I'll talk about is being able to actually move to a converged core. So um, yes, you know, initially there may be a, a, a 4G and 5G core kind of running side by side, but um, operators are looking to uh, evolve or, or, or migrate to a uh, one core that can actually address uh, both 4G, 5G, in fact, in some cases, even 2G and 3G. Um, so I'll definitely touch on, on, on some of these things as part of the, the converged packet core. Um, so before we go into the, the, the products themselves, um, just kind of a couple of things in terms of, you know, what are the kind of the key pillars or drivers in terms of cloud native? Um, one thing that I already talked about are the service-based interfaces. Um, so making sure that, um, you know, we, we have common APIs here um, the, the the approach that vendors take does matter so uh, it is not just about taking for example uh, legacy software or taking vm based software and moving in a container um, it's really about you know breaking down the the application into microservices isolating those microservices making sure that they are stateless in nature and then you know enabling them to run in containers uh, the reason why that matters is that by isolating microservices, um, when a microservice fails, um, especially if they're stateless microservices, um, the impact on the network, um, it's, 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 uh, it's not there. In other words, a, a service can fail and a new service can come up and continue when the other service have, have left off. Um, if we take a look, for example, how some of the, um, the Netflix, Netflix of the world or Facebook of the world or Google's of the world are building their applications, they're really building it on this granular microservice architecture um, with, with stateless data where they can scale rapidly. They can scale down when um, the, 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 you know, the, the throughput or the user demands are, um, are not there. Or when there is a failure, uh, a new service comes up without actually having impact to the end user. So that's very, very important in terms of how actually a cloud native solution is being built. The other thing is, around DevOps and continuous delivery. Um, by, by, by moving to a, a cloud native architecture, um, really we're moving to being able to take new features, new updates, new fixes in a much, much faster rate than, uh, than what has been done before. Uh, no need to wait six months, nine months uh, to, to do a major upgrade. Uh, the idea here is that both within the vendor of how vendor does their software development and testing, as well as how we actually provide software to the, to the operators, um, being able to uh, do in-service upgrades, rolling upgrades, and, and be able to actually even update a particular microservice um, and, and, and without actually having to stop or pause the network uh, for a maintenance window or for, for a test run. So those kind of, all of those components are very, very important when it comes to actually building a cloud native solution. Um, 
only multi-generational support. So this is another thing, um, and, and I know that question was more about uh, maybe running a 4G and a 5G system side by side. That is absolutely true, um, but we have seen operators looking for a long-term solution. So, um, and this is true across 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 different regions. Um, what Mavinia did was instead of kind of taking the the kind of the 4G architecture and adding 5G on top of it, um, we actually started with a, a clean slate when it comes to cloud native. So we actually started with 5G first. Uh, we developed the 5G application first, a 5G standalone, and then we start adding 4G functionality as well as 3G and 2G functionality. Um, it may not be apply applicable to all the use cases, but even our SGSN um, uh, network functions it's containerized and it actually um, it's, it's, it's cloud native. So uh, we, of course, different operators will adopt this at a rate, um, but we do see where operator will introduce 5G, uh, but at the same time will leverage the same core for 4G and where applicable for 3G and 2G. The reason why this is important is that it, it will definitely reduce the overall OPEX uh, when it comes to you know having to support two different cores, two different architectures, uh, versus actually consolidating into a single architecture, um, in terms of um, operational support, in terms of how you actually integrate with your OSS and BSS systems, um, all of those things actually will allow you to actually have um, a much much greater savings when it comes to opex, um, and as well as uh, capex as well uh, uh, moving forward. Um, just go here. So I'll spend a little time on this slide just to kind of give you the, 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 the full view in terms of all the different functions that are being offered as part of the Mavinia Converge Packet Core. So um, as I was saying, it's, it's, it's a solution that provides, uh, addresses both starting with 2G all the way to 5G. Uh, on the 2G and 3G side and the 4G side, we have the SGSN, the MME, uh, S gateway, P, P gateway with a combined GGSN, um, and then a media engine. The media engine provides a functionality like video optimization, TCP optimization, uh, CG net functionality. Um, all that is available with the, the 2G, 3G, and 4G EPC. Um, the next thing we have done is we have taken the 5G, uh, SMF, and UPF, and we have added combo functionality for support for 3G and 4G. So that's why you see in the second box here, uh, SMF plus SA Gateway C and UPF plus SA Gateway U. Um, and then the third box are the 5G specific functions. So this is your AMF, NRF, NSSF, uh, AUSF, SCP and BSC. Everything you see here, uh, it's running on the same common architecture. So it's all containerized. Uh, leverages Kubernetes um, and and uh, and other cloud native uh, components, um, and then on in addition to that, we actually offer um, additional services. So non 3 gpp access. So this is your EPDG, TWAG, uh, N3IWF, which is the evolution of of EPDG, and TNGF, which is the evolution of TWAG. On security, security gateway, EIR, SCPP. And then on IoT and SMS, uh, SCEF for your 4G, NEF, evolution of SCEF, and SMSF, which is the evolution for uh, SMS functionality for 5G. So uh, even within, so this is kind of the converged packet core. Um, there's two other components that are under the same umbrella of, of, of the converged core. Uh, one is the subscriber data management. Uh, so in subscriber data management, you have your HSS, um, as well as the UDM UDR for 5G uh, subscriber management. The UDSF is the essentialized, which is so all the data, all different transactions during, during, uh, during processing is being saved in the UDSF. Uh, and lastly, on uh, from a policy and, 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 and charging, we have a combined uh, CHF and a convert charging system, a combined PCF and PCRF, 
in a, a CGF, which is designed for uh, offline CDRs and correlation of, of CGNet data records. So again, a full portfolio to provide end-to-end -end, uh, coverage. Uh, everything is fully containerized um, in terms of uh, functionality. So there's no need to actually deploy VMs. It can run in VMs if required as containers in VMs, uh, but that's, uh, that's not required. Uh, one more thing on the top there, um, in addition to all the different functions, uh, we also provide a common management system. So uh, having the same management system across the entire network, as well as analytics solution, uh, which both provide analytics, but also enables uh, machine learning and AI using the NWDAF. And lastly, uh, network slicing management orchestration. So both from what do you need to do in terms of to deploy your, your Converge core, as well as uh, do lifecycle management and create network slices and manage the SLA of those network slices. So I know there's a little bit, uh, a lot of information on this particular slide, but just kind of wanted to uh, give us, give a full overview of the end-to-end -end, um, uh, offering that, that Mavina provides. Okay, so in summary here, um, I wanna make sure we leave a few minutes here for questions, but I do want to uh, touch on, on the uh, kind of the, the key tenets. Um, we, we kind of talked about this, um, but I will go over the, each, each one of these pillars. The first thing we talked about was about being a, being a, a multi-cloud platform. So um, taking the, the Converge core, uh, building it on, on open source components, uh, in terms of leveraging Kubernetes, leveraging Helm um, uh, uh, for for the packet core, being able to run on different platforms. Um, so either being VMware Tanzu, uh, being OpenShift from Red Hat, um, all, or being able to run on a, a public cloud, um, uh, AWS, Azure, Google, uh, as well as Mavinir, or uh, within Mavinir we have our own um, uh, containers as a service and platform as a uh, as a service platform called MWP web scale platform. 100% cloud native. So um, I, I think I covered this, but just to kind of uh, emphasize some of these things, being able to have a fully containerized, fully cloud native solution across all Gs, 2G, 3G, 4G, and 5G. Um, one of the things I do want to highlight is that um, how actually um, the the the, 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 the packet core was built. So again, not necessarily just taking large VM software and moving it in containers, having small images, uh, making sure that the containers are very small. Um, the reason why that matters is that if a particular service fails, uh, it should not take more than a second or two to actually spin up a new service. Um, if you have large VMs, um, it'll, it can take multiple, multiple minutes for a particular service to come up. If I need to scale, I need to be able to scale quickly. Um, so it's, it's important to actually take that in consideration of how the containers and how the services are being built. From a use case perspective, um, being able to leverage the same core uh, for ver various use cases. So we talked about consumer, but 5G, um, it's much more, for, be goes beyond that, being able to, IoT use cases, being able to address Mac use cases, and then having a small footprint private network type of use cases. One of the big things, um, we touched on it, I, I know we have a one hour session, so we didn't go into the details, but automation, machine, machine learning, and analytics are a big, big part of um, the next gen core. So being able to leverage data, being able to simplify um, how things are being deployed, how things have life cycle managed, um, how things scaled up, scaled down. Um, a lot of those processes need to be automated. Um, so th this really drives, um, um, you know, OPEX savings, um, as well as being able to actually understand data to take advantage of, of, of new use cases. And lastly, um, enabling new technologies. So uh, we talked about Mac and Edge, um, but in addition to that, it's really about um, leveraging um, uh, the, the, the UPF, making sure that the UPF can perform in a, at a high data rate. Um, Mavina is actually working with 
um, some of these smart NIC providers like uh, you know partners like Intel and Nvidia where we able we are actually able to offload the packet processing from the user plane onto the smart NIC and really really achieve high data rates um, for the UPF. This is important because data keeps growing. Uh, if you have Mac applications that are very video intensive or throughput intensive, um, you know you still want that UPF to be very very performing and take advantage of 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 the smart NIC offload, not just about throughput but also latency. If I can offload packet processing onto the smart NIC, I can I can really really re reduce the latency uh, when it comes to some of these V2X or or AR VR type of applications. So again, just just. Um, so that um, I, I covered a couple of things. In terms of um, I guess what we are doing in terms of making India, and after that, I'll be more than happy to answer any questions that may come up um, as part of the uh, chat window. So, Sudan, I'll turn it over to you for the last slide, please. So Dan, can you you're on mute. You're on mute, Sudanshu. Ah, okay, sorry. My apology. My apology. Uh, thank you, Dehan. You really explained the operator challenges that uh, uh, we do face uh, to meet this 5G demand. Uh, you covered how to mitigate the requirement of outage speed of recovery. You covered the lower capex and opex requirement, the agility that the capability are there. Mavinir is well placed in this indian subcontinent so we do have nearly 70 plus uh, r d forces within india we have close to four r d centers serving the global need uh, uh, we do also partnership with uh, local manufacturers uh, to build the radio for the edge applications on open run technology so on the same edge ra radio deployment we could put uh, the NPN kind of environment, NPN kind of solution, and along with age applications like uh, they had explained. Uh, to meet the requirement of this Make in India, we uh, have made our packet core products, the, all the functionality and requirements of Make in India. So our packet core products fall under this Make in India policy. So from that perspective, uh, we are well placed for meeting the requirements of all the uh, telecom service providers, all the industrial players to go for the 5G rollout. Thank you. Thank you, Sudanshu. Um, let me just, we can go here. And of course, we'll share the material as well, if not already, maybe already the material has been shared. Um, I know we have a few minutes left. Um, and I'll be I'll be more than happy, and myself and Sudanshu will be more than happy to answer any questions uh, that may have come uh, via the chat window. Thanks, Dayan. Thanks, Sudanshu. Yes, there are a couple of questions, some uh, more on technology, but there's one specific question on uh, Mavenier, so I'll want to you know, take it first before we move to the more generic ones. Uh, okay. The question is, is this system or your product hardware agnostic? agnostic? How does custom hardware software hardware fit in this scenario? Yes, um, yeah. So it is definitely 100% hardware agnostic. Um, any COTS hardware, um, the the Mavenir solution will work on. So we have decoupled totally uh, our application from the hardware. So um, any kind of uh, Dell, uh, HP, uh, Cisco hardware. Um, you know any kind of a different hardware that is cuts hardware uh, our application can can run on um, so there's no issue when it comes to the hardware um, the same th thing is true for the processor it could be an Intel processor could be AMD processor um, uh, mentioned Nvidia and Intel the NIC cards can be uh, uh, AMD card I mean I'm sorry Nvidia cards uh, or Mellanox cards they they acquired Mellanox uh, or Intel so when it comes to hardware very very agnostic um, one of the things that Mavine has done, and this is true for our 4G solution, as well as our new Converge 5G solution, um, is that in many cases, you know, we have come in 
um, and typically the operator may already have existing hardware running. So um, uh, we have interrupt with, with many different hardware vendors. Yes, as Mavinia, we can provide our own hardware, but in many cases, we adapt to the hardware that the operator already has or they already you know, have in their, in, their, in their data center. Um, so hopefully that answered that, that particular question. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, Dhanshu, you have anything to add? Uh, should we move to the next question? Yeah, so uh, a few things. Uh, as Dehan had already mentioned, we have deployed almost any hardware, uh, course hardware that is given by the operators or the, all our customers to deploy our various solutions. But not only x86, the server itself, even the operators have also asked us to adapt to new CPUs that comes out. For example, we were working on uh, Intel Cascade Lake. Tomorrow, Ice Lake is coming up. Earlier, it was Sky, it was Skylake uh, CPUs. So we are quite uh, is, agile in terms of adapting the new hardware platform that operator selects. Thank, thank you, Sudansu. So this is a, a, a question more on the difference between 4G and 5G. It says, is there any functionality difference between 4G and 5G cloud system? Uh, either of you can take it up there. Yes, so it is. I mean, I, I think we, we touched on some of this. Um, so there's, of course, from a, a architecture standpoint, there's quite a bit of changes. Um, you know, in 4G, now again, some are virtualized, uh, but some some systems may still be running on proprietary hardware, um, whereas 5G, it's, it's purely, as we just talked about, hardware agnostic. Um, from a, a communication standpoint, uh, 4G relies on a lot of this, uh, you know, 3GPP reference interfaces, so diameter, um, you know, again, it's, it's much harder to actually do this interrupt um, uh, when it comes to different vendors, whereas the 5G um, has a, a, a pure serv service-based um, uh, architecture. Um, of course, speeds are, are different. Um, so with, with 5G, with both NSA and SA, the, the, the speed that, uh, the throughput that you're getting with 5G, um, it's much higher compared to 4G. Uh, the latency, um, so this is where 5G, um, I touched a little bit on this in, the, in that presentation, uh, being able to take advantage of um, ultra reliable, uh, low latency type of use cases um, and enhance yeah, EMBB type of use cases from a from a five G core perspective. So there is definitely um, you know advantages uh, and differences um, at a multiple multiple levels when it comes to four G uh, compared to five G. Again, not just for the consumer, but also for um, you know the use cases we talked about, like Mac. And, and private networks. Sudanshu, any points you want to add? No, that's fine. So there, there's, uh, there's the, uh, the fourth question actually, third question. Uh, this is more a take on the second call question that uh, we had, I think so, yeah. So it says, uh, will it not be easier to hand over the entire network management and deployment to one vendor rather than managing multiple vendors? Uh, I remember right, if 62% uh, had said that they would want to give it to you know new uh, multiple vendors for 4G and 5G. So uh, the question is, will it not be easier to hand over the entire network management and deployment to one vendor rather than managing multiple vendors? Um, so the way I will answer that, I mean, yeah, if, if yes and no, right? Um, the, the thing is, though, if you do one vendor, I mean, of course, you know, if, if from an operator perspective, you know, going to one vendor, you also lose the leverage and, and a lot of other things. The reason why 5G um, and cloud native opens the door for multiple vendors is because things are becoming much more standardized. Just to give you an example, and, um, you know, I've kind of gone through the kind of the, the running of proprietary hardware to VMs. When when with 4G, when virtualization happened, there was a lot of promises, but it really took a long time, for example, to deploy a VNF. You know, there was um, there was on app, uh, they were trying to automate things. Um, then Etsy or Mano came in, um, but it took a long time to actually define, okay, how do I really quickly deploy VNFs? 
what's happening with 5G is that the vendors are, are standardizing, for example, on Kubernetes or standardizing using Helm charts. Um, and, and what that allows us to do is that even it doesn't matter if it's one vendor, doesn't matter if it's five vendors, the way I will deploy a CNF, it's in the same way. You provide Helm charts, you provide CSAR packages, and you deploy it. If I need to configure something, you provide NetConf APIs and, and every vendor will follow the same APIs. If I need to provide alarms, stats, logs, I'm gonna use Kafka and I'm gonna actually stream um, the information and integrate with the monitoring system of the operator. Um, so, uh, in, you know, alarms, um, there's, a, there's a, uh, 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 you know, REST interfaces that are being used. The reason I'm saying this, we have seen operators, and this is true not just in the US, uh, Europe, uh, APAC, where they have come in and said, look, I, wanna, I want a multi-vendor uh, 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 operator. I mean, I want a multi-vendor solution because that enables me to, not just to, to have leverage, but also to, to push innovation, right? Um, to make sure that you know, you're picking best of breed for a particular function. Um, but every operator is saying, look, I have a common observability and I have a common platform. Um, so, we, I mean, we've seen this trend and, and yes, you know, it may make sense to go with one vendor, but with cloud native, um, that, that, that roadblock or that issue has been taken away. If you look at, for example, what web applications do, I can run, I can come as an as, as application builder and I can run on Google, I can run on AWS. Um, it doesn't really matter who is building the application. They have defined what it, what's the requirements to run on their cloud. They have defined how do you integrate for charging, how do you integrate for monitoring, and then now they open the door for multiple, multiple vendors running on their platform. So it's really a game changer. I know I'm not giving you a long answer, but that question is very important. It's really a game changer of what cloud native will enable um, for for the operator, uh, of course, the vendors will be there, but the operator now really can choose best of breed without having to worry about okay, how to actually integrate with two or three vendors. Thanks, Dan. Um, um, definitely, you perhaps read between the lines, and you talked about the integration uh, part that the vendors are doing it, and also the interoperability part. Um, anything uh, you want to add, Sudanshu? Uh, should we move to the next question? Yeah. So to yeah. add to that, to add to what Dehan said, so we have enabled this uh, 5G, a cloud native converged mobile core, possible to be deployed on not only on the pub private cloud of an operator, but also on public cloud, but also on hybrid cloud. Some components could be running on the private environment of an operator. Some components can still be on the public. So it gives some leverage. It leverages the operator to go to the market very fast because we give that capability to run this cloud native core to be deployed in a hybrid cloud. Thanks, Sudanshu. So they're very interesting question. And as I had mentioned also earlier, whenever we talk about cloud or uh, you know, uh, SaaS, for example, we also look into the privacy issue, the security issue. So here is this question, you know, how is user privacy ensured in 5G architecture with so many service-based functions? Any hacker can try to access any service function. So, so uh, yeah, I can take that then, uh, Sudansh, if you want to add something. Uh, I mean, security, honestly, 5G is actually more secure than the 4G. Um, uh, in these small multiple levels. So, um, there is communication security. So, so uh, with cloud native, um, uh, you know, at, at the platform level. So for example, how microservices talk to each other in terms of like using things like MTLS to actually um, secure the, the, the messaging between containers um, to having certificates uh, when it comes to um, security between network functions. So for example, making sure that, you know, this AMF can talk to this UPF or SMF, um, there's a certificate management. So that's a kind of a second layer of, of security. And then there's subscriber security. So being able to, for example, UDM, UDR, uh, have a common database that is encrypted in terms of subscriber data protection. 
um, uh, and then um, just overall authentication. So, you know, the AUSF and being able to actually authenticate end-to-end -end users. Um, so those are just some of the things. Um, the other things that um, are introduced as part of 5G Core is the SCPP, which is your um, security from a 5G perspective than actually what was done in, 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 the, in, the, in the 4G world. So I hope that that answer uh, that question, if, you know, and by the way, if, if not, we, we have some uh, contact information. We'll be more than happy to share some information in terms of all the different things, not just Mavenir, but just the, the community is doing around 5G and, and, and security. It's a, whole, um, it's a whole set of standards that um, are being defined specific to security around 5G. Thanks, thanks, uh, Dian. There's one uh, more question, and perhaps though we are two minutes over uh, time, but uh, we might want to take this. Uh, it is, okay. is Mavenir planning to run the core radio network also as cloud native service in 5G? Can, can you repeat it? Is, is Mavenir planning is, what? I didn't... Is Mavenir planning to run the core radio network also as cloud native service in 5G? Yes, in fact, we're already there. So our open RAN, it's cloud native. So, uh, you know, we are the leader when it comes to open RAN. Um, so the CUDU, the RU. Uh, so there's the other thing. Our, you know, we, we have an end-to-end -end cloud native. So open RAN plus 5G core or converged core, I should say. Um, everything is it's, it's cloud native. Everything is containerized. Everything running on a, on a common container platform. So. Um, not that we are just planning, we're actually already there with, with, with both solutions. And our, our uh, IMS voice, by the way, just to add the, the other component. So our IMS boy, uh, voice core is also containerized. So end-to-end -end, um, access, 4G, 5G access, converge packet core, and, and, and voice, um, uh, it's all containerized and all cloud native. Anything you want to add? Uh, Sanchu, uh, they have covered pretty well. Uh, in 5G, that CUCP, CUUP functionality, particularly apart from the DU, because in Open LAN, we have splitted uh, uh, the BBU component to DU and CUCP and CUUP. All these three functionalities are containerized. Now, when uh, we have containerized the CUCP, CUUP, we have also containerized the packet code for which this session was for. So we could put the entire core, the access core, the radio, COCP, COP, and the application layer like voice over NR into just three servers to make a NPN, non-public private network. That is what was Dehan also covered in one of his slides. Yes, and we do have our own distribution uh, for the cloud native uh, CAS and PaaS layer. We call it Mavinid Web Scale Platform. Mm -hmm. It allows us to put independently without getting dependent on any operators uh, distribution from CAS and PaaS layer, like uh, opens for example, or uh, any, uh, any uh, industry leader uh, distribution platform. So we have prepared that so that if an operator needs to deploy a cloud native system, uh, the platform also comes from Avenue as an option. Thank you, thank you, Sanchu. Thanks a lot. Uh, uh, we have some more questions, but I think uh, uh, we have the names of the participants who are asking that. So we'll mail it to you, and maybe you can, you know, uh, reply to those sure. or reply to us, Absolutely. and we can forward it and post it with this video uh, on the on-demand channel that we have, uh, along with the transcript. Uh, the participants can also, you know, uh, get in touch with you guys. See your uh, Coordinates are there, your email ID is there. So, with this, you know, uh, I'd like to thank again uh, Mr. Dian, uh, Lester Dosky, and Mr. Sudan Sudora for making it such a wonderful presentation and also walking us through the technology trends that's impacting and shaping the industry, the 4G and 5G use cases that you talked about, the cloud IoT, Mac applications, and NPN. And you also talked about how a single, uh, you know, the server can be used to deploy a full-blown private network. 
and uh, also explain variety of localized service that can be offered using cloud and native 5G code. And uh, I also thank Navinier for supporting this technology session. Uh, also on behalf of Cyber Media and Corset Data, I thank all participants who joined us today. And happy to inform you all that uh, today's webinar will be available on on-demand video on the Voice and Data YouTube channel uh, for you to watch and share. And also there might be answers from the speakers. Uh, we'll try to put it there. Uh, as part of the transcript. Uh, with this, I'd like to call it a day today. But before that, uh, may I request you all to share your feedback through the form that will be visible on your screen uh, as you disconnect. This is very important for us because uh, it helps us improve our webinar in future. And with the signing off for today, this is Shubhendu Park, your host for today's webinar. Stay home, stay safe, and keep reading voice and data. Jai Thank you, Shivendra. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.